suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another week of Stone de Petit with your host. As always, it's me, Kip, and next to me on the therapy pal- couch at the studios is CBCB. How are you, brother? I can't complain. We're coming off a big week of some good good Friday night happy hour fun. Yeah, I think most people saw it on our social media today or yesterday, and uh, the Annette recap, I'm sure people are sick of us talking about it, so we won't harp on it too much, but goddamn, that food is fucking good. It's so good. I mean, like, and if you haven't made it out there to try it, get out there. I mean, it's it's accessible. It's good. It's just, I, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, well, before we get into uh, the weekend that was and all the dank eats and the new openings and things of that nature in the Denver community, we need to give a shout out to our sponsors. First and foremost, the Seed and Smith Gang. Obviously, April is a big month for the stoner community, with 420 being a fake holiday that we pretend is real, when in actuality, most stoners just get high every day and they don't give a fuck about a holiday. But because of the holiday, it's like celebrating Jesus, 24, you know, 7, 365. <laughs> but in Christmas, you really hammer it home. But Seed and Smith is hammering home the deals for all the stoners in April. Um, all month long, they've had different deals every single day of the week. Every week, they've kind of been different. But as you listen to this, it's uh, Chiba Chews Tuesday over there. It's 25% off your whole, all Chiba Chews purchases. And then tomorrow, if you're listening to this on a Wednesday, because we drop this Tuesday afternoons, they have two orders of koala edibles out the door for 25 bucks. That's in addition to the cartridges, live resin, four for 65 out the door. Keef mocktails, two for 30, which makes it roughly like about 15 bucks a shake. Infused pre-rolls, they have the heavy hitters, two for 20 bucks, four for 20 for the uh, Keef Colas for their Louisville location only. And then for their Medi style, uh, they have killer deals on their Blackjack Live dart pods. Uh, everyone knows we love the dart pods. They have two for 50 on those puppies. And they have Keef Colas for the Med side, four for 40. And these deals run all month long with different things going every day. And then a culmination of on 420, we really make our nut, and all of those deals are available on said day. So that Wednesday, if you find yourself trying to uh, find a location that has killer deals, check out our friends over at Seed and Smith. Damn, all on one day? Yeah, but all those leading up to it as well. You can get those all month long deals. Um, and then also, there's killer deals. If you're in the downtown Denver area, go swing through Denver's best new dispensary, according to Denver Westward. Um, that's Cali's Cannabis. Cali has three locations across the community. They have one up in North Glen. They have the flagship location, which is uh, garnering awards as well as uh, high reviews, which is 31st in Larimer. And then their third location which also has the grow attached to us that's eighth and canosa court obviously they have a uh, great deals of the day no matter the month but they also have feature brands that they're doing for the 420 month so swing through there load up on some epic gifts not only for yourself but maybe for your friends your family and even fido the pet they have fucking cbd uh array so if you're trying to find something for joints or help your dog eat or if it has anxiety go check out cali's cannabis they've got something for everyone including including our four-legged friends. And the best part about it, every dollar you spend there is a reward program. So it goes back into the bank so you can cash in those bucks later. You'll be smoking for free all May long if you load up a Cali's Cannabis. You can check them out. That's uh, Cali, C-A-L-L-I-E-S, Cannabis.com. All right, Chris. Well ready? done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we have a pretty kick-ass episode today. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, how to plan for the 420 weekend because really it starts – Today, you know, this week, uh, the Sensei Magazine, Sensei Magazine Party is 413. And then there's concerts, food events, everything starting up this weekend. It's going to be a bitchin' good time. 
I mean, yeah. I mean, you're in the you're in the state that just parties 420 like it's going out of style. Yeah, and so like in years past, we usually just shit on the party that's downtown <laughs> because it's fucking chaotic and it's just people are like it's kind of like the cliche thing to do. It's like Disney World of pot. Um, but this year we will be down in it. We've teamed up with Euflora to go down and do some VIP shooting and stuff of that nature. I really just want to get that picture, that still photo of everyone puffing tough in the in Civic Center Park with just the cloud of haze above it and then dub it over with maybe a little Little John. And well, up in smoke or yeah. something? But I'll be goddamn sure that I'm not going to stick around for much. Like 428, I'm out of there. Like as soon as, you know, we're getting in and getting out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a quick, we're there, we did that, let's go. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's not the only thing going on. There's dinner events like with Chef Royalty. We were talking about that on the pod this afternoon. We have a killer guest on the back end of this. Um, he's a wizard, but at the same time, there's events peppered all throughout, you know, and so it, it kind of starts this week. So if you're looking for concerts, obviously Cervantes is going to be piping. Red Rocks has shows going as well. The themed events are just going to be everywhere. And speaking of themed, we recently, uh, were published in Westward article. Uh, Molly quoted me by saying when I said suck a dick and I did not think that was going to make it into a print publication. So whoops. Sorry about that. I mean, you got to get the masses to read that print. What's better than a little plug like suck that dick. <laughs> suck the dick. Yeah. Um, we were referencing restaurants and how they're covered on social media and in the <laughs> internet. And that was the one that stuck. It wasn't like the nice things I said about the restaurants in town. I was like that one place. Suck that. They suck. Yeah. So uh, hopefully it wasn't in context. It wasn't too derogatory. It was more of just a general fellatio comment than anything else. Yeah. I feel like was that directed toward Federales or? Yeah. All Federales. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All three locations across the country. <laughs> but at the same time, it was a good time getting to catch up with Molly. She was able to witness us. We kind of teased it last week. She was with us at the end of the bracket challenge. So she watched it go kind of ape shit wild but it was a good time so um chris let's dive into some other restaurants that we may have eaten this weekend masters recap uh the Rockies started out with a fucking series win over the dodgers right and i went to i went to the game saturday you went to the game saturday and it was fucking great like that was wish, the one with connor joe had the the homer and the yeah eight. yeah I, I i wish like you know opening day at rockies the stadium's always packed and if they could keep a baseball stadium that packed throughout the year, it would be incredible. But well, I no mean, fucking shit. They're not like, I don't know, Boston or, you know, the Yanks or Chicago Cubs when they're semi relevant. Right. But at the same time, like, not even keeping like that, that crowd size, it's the enthusiasm. If we can keep that enthusiasm throughout right. the summer, it makes life so much better because if the Rockies are good, the businesses downtown do well because people are coming in these games. But if we do the usual April and May, we actually kind of maybe we're OK if we can get to the, you know, maybe we'll be buyers at the All-Star break. And then we just drop off, you know, in June and we start sinking like a stone in water. That's usually what happens. I will say, though, the highlight, I got my first stadium dog of the year. Ooh, you know, I love a good hot dog. Give us a rate review. How was the snack? Which you, is it a biker gyms or just a stadium dog? I just I just went with the stadium dog, the concession stand that just had Rocky dogs, or you could get the brat. So we went double. Okay, so why don't we? I think this would be a good time to introduce the concept that we've we've spoken with the team from Gringos Tacos, and I want to plug them because they are inside of Empower Field, but they're also inside of Rocky Stadium. Um, as well as Red Rock. So they're going to be like, the, you'll see them all over the place. I want to proposition this to you because the guys from Barstool do the 999 challenge with nine hot dogs, nine beers, nine innings. What if we do that with Gringo Tacos? Because everyone knows Rockies, you know, over seven runs, you get tacos. What if we do that in the stadium next week? For those that are listening, we're going to the Phillies game on 420. What if we go for a little 999 challenge, Chris? Do you think you can handle it? I I mean so yeah yeah I, I think it'd be a fun undertaking I don't know if I can handle it you don't think you could put nine tacos down in three hours I will say I think I could much easier do tacos than dogs because tacos you don't have as much you know you the just breading. got the, depending on how big the fucking taco is because the dog I got was like a foot long dog you can't take down nine foot longs. 
Ask your mom. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Byron. By- I was just kidding. Yeah. Shout uh, out to our favorite listener. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> One of two. We only have two. <laughs> Shout out to mom. Uh, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like, I feel like a taco, nine beers. I, I think I could do it. Yeah. So nine tacos, nine beers, nine innings. The beers is probably what's going to get the filling of the stomach. So when you add that, you almost had to Kobayashi the hot dogs to get them down or, Take your favorite vape pen into the stadium. Shout out to Seed and Smith. Yes. So we're going to try that. And I recommend anybody else that's listening to this and is going to a game this year, it's going to be called the Stone Up Petite Challenge. It's nine tacos, nine beers, or mixed cocktails, if you can find the way to get let the Rio give them to you, in nine innings. You have to complete the, the Stone Up Petite Challenge. Also, one thing I want to point out at the stadium is – and nobody out here gets it. I think it's just a Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia thing. But bold peanuts would be a dream come true to have at Rocky Stadium. And one other thing I'm not so sure about stadium food-wise are the fruit kebabs. So I think those are a pretty big staple. I see those things all the time in ball for uh, the hockey games. Would you, Where would you put those on the Pantheon or the power rankings of, like, baseball game snacks? I. Uh, a uh, uh, fruit kebab? Yeah, they're not I, bad. They're they not, aren't? You've no, had one? Yeah, they're not bad. With the gl- little drizzle glaze on top of chocolate or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I I just don't see them in the stadium. When I'm thinking stadium stuff, I'm thinking like Cracker Jacks. Uh, I'm thinking what about like helmet baseball cups? Helmet baseball cups with, with ice cream? cream? Oh, I mean, I used to get those at Braves games. You'd get like a little memorabilia kind of plastic thing you Fuck could yeah. take with you. Yeah, we had those minor league baseball growing up, so same, same, but different. I think I had one filled with Dippin' Dots, the ice cream of the future. Yeah, whatever happened to those guys? It's just the present now, and they're <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Okay, so I guess that's a great question. Before we move on, let's talk about it. What are – you put Cracker Jacks in the top three? Like, you still eat those as a grown adult? I, I wouldn't say as a grown adult. I was thinking more of, like, like what, what I – Nachos with shitty cheese. Nachos with shitty cheese plays uh, – Soft the, pretzel? Soft pretzel is always a mainstay. I, I – yeah, I'm going to go with a soft pretzel nine out of ten times. And then I, last year, I haven't been to a game this year, but the 505 Southwestern little kiosk, they had some heater snacks as well over there. What, so, what are they, souped up nachos? or That and like pork, like burgers and shit like that. They had green chili top items, yeah. But, I mean, I'm going to have to think about that. We're going to have to do a power rankings of all the snacks in the stadium, and we'll start next week. We'll start filming next week. Cotton candy is a good one. No, it's not. Con- you're thinking of, like, nine-year-old Chris. Let's think about, like, 30-year-old. If you can drink a beer, what are the snacks you want? Like, what happens if a foul ball comes in your area? What are you... You're, I mean, I guess the cotton candy may be pretty good there. Your sticky <laughs> fingers would work in that instance. But at the same time, it's like, think about... If it's coming up, you want to – it's the nachos. The nachos, the hot dog in the hand, you try to grab it with one. If you had a cotton candy in the other, people online would just blast you. You would go viral for all the wrong reasons. They'd like, look at this grown man eating a fucking cotton candy and just nabs a foul ball. Like, that's absurd. That is true. That is true. But it can happen. Okay, yeah. So we are going to catch uh, a baseball game next week. We're starting the 999 challenge. Chris, I asked you at the beginning of football season and as we're kind of ramping up, you know, what would the the Broncos record be? How would Teddy Bridgewater have fared? Let me ask you the same question about the Rockies. Not for you to have to go out there and start throwing names around like Kyle Freeland and Connor Joe and our new addition and Chris Bryant, but the over under by Vegas preseason set was 68 and a half wins. What do you think is going to happen? I think we go over. I don't know shit about baseball, but that's my general consensus. They were throwing some heaters out there against the Dodgers this past week. The closing, the relief pitcher who came in, I can't remember his name, but he came in there and finished the job. So maybe the Rockies might have something. I would like to believe that we we can post a number above 70, you know, because that just means you're com- you're playing competitive ball throughout the season. So well, we'll see. Last year, didn't we almost, didn't Rocktober, didn't we almost make it there? Or was that? 
I can't remember. No. No. No, not last year, but a couple years ago we made it into the play in game. So, you know, it would be uh it would be cool if we could, you know, dance around the with the hundred and sixty three games. If we could dance around